Good morning, everyone. This is Sarah with Raven's Crochet, and this is my furry feline Raven. Say good morning, Raven. Say good morning. Good morning, guys. It is 10.30 as of right now, as I'm filming this. Hey, baby, want your morning treats? <clears throat> Come on. Hey, baby, here you go. Okay, I give her her morning treats every morning after I give her her breakfast and it just to let to, just to let her know that she's a sweet girl and she's great for waking me up and just having the love to cuddle with so <clears throat> this is an unexpected video but I'm gonna go ahead and make this episode two of getting to know me questions <clears throat> excuse me I just got back a little bit ago from a Harley Davidson motorcycle ride. I'm like feeling so good. It has been, I have not been on a bike this year at all. And the fact that my buddy Andy came over to surprise me was just perfect timing because I, I'm off work today. So I'm planning on making the pom poms for those blue hats. And I'm gonna try to get that video made and get it uploaded later tonight um i've got some laundry i've got to do and a couple of chores but um for the most part i'm just going to relax and do my yarn thing so i've known andy for i'd say three and a half years now i think we met in february in 2017 2018 three and a half years give or take and he's a great guy. Um, we're not committed. We're not in a relationship. We're just, we're, we're fun lovers and we hang out, you know, yeah, we're intimate, but, um, we're not committed. He works all the time. I work all the time. I do my own thing. He does his own thing, but he's my only partner. And, um, I only see him maybe once or twice a month. And, um, when he does come over, it's just so refreshing. Um, he's a really good friend and I trust him. And I care about him and um, he's just a really good buddy and so every once in a while he'll take me on a bike ride which is amazing um, I grew up riding Harley Davidson's my mother was a huge fanatic she would not date anyone unless they had a Harley and um, so I just I grew up on him one of my favorite guys that she, that she dated was um, I can't remember his name for the to save my life he was a big boy. He was a big guy, but he was like a soft, one of those soft, squishy teddy bears. Like, right? He just had that type of personality. He had a canary yellow fat boy, beautiful canary yellow bike, gorgeous. Um, and that was, that's pretty much one of the major memories that I have of riding that bike. I have a scar from getting on the bike from the wrong side. I have like this big old whelp right above my ankle of where. I hit the hot, very, very hot exhaust pipe. You're supposed to get on from the left, from the left side, not the right. So you get on the bike too, just as if you were getting in from the driver's side of a car. So <clears throat> you never get on from the, from the right side, otherwise you might get burned by the exhaust pipe. And it's very faint. It happened like when I was in my late teens, but, um, or mid teens, give or take. So the scar is not very visible anymore, but it's just the memory of it. Um, it took like a whole entire week to heal, um, but the experience, the experiences I have had are great. I remember he and I went to a Harley Davidson shop to get a gift for my mother. My mother wasn't with us, so it was going to be like a birthday surprise, I think, or something. And, um, you know, the Harley Davidson logo symbol, it says, um, Harley Davidson motorcycle. This said, highly dangerous mother ever. <laughs> And so it was like the perfect shirt. <clears throat> um, just, we just got a kick out of it. Uh, let's see. So this is getting to know me questions. Hi, baby girl. And um, so the first question I have, um, the first several questions I have are from subscribers who left those questions in the comments. The first one is, um, is it okay to combine, and this is these are yarn questions and getting to know me questions. So it is, is it okay to combine um, cotton acrylic blend yarns 
with other smaller fibers. It just simply says, is it okay to combine with cotton acrylic blend yarns? Yes, but it also depends on what the garment is going to be and how you plan on washing it. You can combine any other washable type of fiber with it. That's easily machine washable and dryable. For example, let me get this, get this down. If I get to it, I'm going to make some Americana baskets with this and some a shawl for my for my grandmother. And this is a, I think this is like a number two weight yarn. I think so. It's either a thick one or I think it's a number two weight yarn. I don't particularly like working with two weight yarns, so I always double up these strands. Or I will incorporate this strand with another bulky weight of yarn. Um, say if you wanted a red and white marl tweed mix for doing like a Christmas blanket border, you can get the number two red and you can get a number two white or even a number three white or even a number four white if you have that laying around like a worsted weight acrylic yarn and stark white. Get this number two weight yarn. This is like five, this is like three dollars from Ice Yarn's website. It was three dollars for the whole package. I showed this in one of my previous Ice Yarn unboxings a while back. <clears throat> and if you were to combine this with a four worsted weight acrylic white yarn, this would look gorgeous using this for the border. Like a white CDC blanket and then like a candy cane stripe border. Beautiful idea. Um, so that's really doable. Um, I have lots of yarns here that are only one and two weight yarns. If it is a multicolored weight yarn and it's a two weight yarn, I will double it up. So it'll be like a four weight yarn. The fine, super fine, thin, like lace blend, um, lace, lace weight yarns, I will either triple those up on their own or I will incorporate that yarn with a thicker like number three or number four, <clears throat> especially the, um, let's see, I think they're called something pearl. I can't remember off the top of my head, but one's black and one's white and they both have sparkles in it, but it's like a super fine number one. And it's got, I think either wool or alpaca in it, which is a really, really good animal fiber that, that the two of the warmest animal fibers that will keep you warm. And so if I have a yarn that's just basic acrylic, this doesn't have anything warmer in it, or even if it's just a cotton blend acrylic, <clears throat> and you want to use that particular yarn for like a winter hat, obviously the cotton blend acrylic is not going to be that warm. So you get a super fine or a number two weight yarn that has wool or alpaca in it, and you combine that yarn with your cotton acrylic blend and it will make your garment much warmer for the winter time. And if it's got sparkles in it, it'll add sparkle. I have some gray um, two weight yarn right up there, right there, the light gray. I got like five packs of those because I know I love um, neutral gray tones and I love sparkles with every, every so often. And I made a scarf using it. I, I incorporated that yarn with a thicker number four weight yarn in a, the same color gray and I made like a checker pattern. You, let me just go get it and show you real quick. Hang on. <coughs> All right, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay, I'm back. Well, I got these leggings recently. Aren't they cute? They're only five bucks. Five bucks. I got them from Dollar General in my area, and I rode these on the bike. They're so comfortable, and I love wearing leggings, especially if they're like the smooth polyester blend fabric, not like the rough ones, but these are so comfortable to lounge in. You run to the store, you still look cute. So I did a checker pattern. I used the Nordic yarn from Ice Yarns and the, um, the rose colored cream blend. It, it's, like an, it's like an ombre effect yarn. I used white, and then I also used the gray with the sparkle thread in it, and that's what that looks like. You can see up close, you can, you can see the sparkles in the gray, and so that's just not a four worsted weight yarn, that's got the small glittering thread running through it as well. So I worked up those two strands in the gray section, you know, as one yarn, and then I did the twist, the twist tie 
whatever these are called. This is the first time I've ever done this type of um, fringe. <clears throat> and I wish I had made it a little bit longer, but it's okay. It was the first time I've ever done that. Such a great scarf. I like them. This is like a standard size scarf, but it's so cozy. So cozy. <clears throat> I need to figure out how to make a pat to go with it. I probably won't, but I've got so many other projects going on. Okay, next question. <clears throat> Are you going to line the bag? The bag that they were referring to is this one that I showed you in one of my previous videos. And the answer is no. I have never lined a bag. Um, I don't plan on doing it with this one. This is just like a fun little quick project bag um, that you can put bulky items in it. One of my hair is caught in it, of course. I always leave evidence of my hair behind anywhere I go. Um, but no, I'm not going to line this bag. You can, and if I were to do that, I would have to hand stitch. I would like fold the fabric down a little bit so the, um, so the raw edge would not show. And then I would hand sew it in because I'm not comfortable putting crochet through my sewing machine. Um, I've had so many issues with other fibers and stuff getting caught. I need to clean my sewing machine out for reals. Um, but this is just a basic drawstring bag. I made the cables with the with the looming with the knitting bee, and I will show you guys how to do that in a in a soon to come video. Just been working so much, um, but uh, no, this bag will not be lined. It's just a typical bag that was inspired by a one gallon Ziploc bag, and that's pretty much the shape of this bag. And it can be used as a purse, a small project bag. I'm giving it to my best friend Wendy. She's going to put like just bulky items in it, like her medicine bottles, um, you know, maybe some supplies, maybe some card games or whatever, just something to use for storage, or she can throw this in her purse. So I'm really excited to get this mailed off to her. Um, I, I still have it hanging around because I'm trying to follow the pattern that I used for this because the other bag I'm still working on, I haven't finished it yet, the camouflage, the gray camouflage bag. It turned out a little bit smaller than this one, so I need to go back and start a third bag and see w what went wrong. So I can get this exact same size right here, because this is the exact same size as a one gallon Ziploc bag. <clears throat> Next question. Do, you, do, you, do I have a favorite kind of hook? And is it pencil or knife hold? <clears throat> I do the, I do the um, knife hold. Hang on, let me grab my hooks. I don't have a particular favorite kind of hook. I first learned off of the boy hooks from Walmart, B-O-Y-E. And they have a metal hook all the way through and a soft silicone grip. I'm trying to find one. Yeah, here we go, boy. B-O-Y-E, probably can't see that, but maybe it's, no, okay, you can see a little bit right there. This is a 3.75, you can pick this up at Walmart, or you can order it online. I go to Amazon or eBay, Amazon is, is um, well, both are really great sites. I go to Amazon and eBay, I do comparisons. If I find something I really like on Amazon and on eBay, I compare the prices and the, um, and the quantity of things that I'm getting. I love to buy sets, hook sets, of like 10, 12, 16, something like that. And it comes with like a few stitch markers, some darning needles, maybe a pair of snips. And you can get those sets for like literally under $15. And they are great sustainable hooks. They will last you almost a lifetime. They are really great to work with, very easy. They have, um, points at the head so you can easily go into your stitches. This one appears to be tapered. I love the tapered hooks myself. The inline hooks are okay, but I use tapered hooks most often. So not particularly a brand, so to speak, but I do like tapered hooks. And the other hooks I like, I've recently come to love, are these, mm, excuse me, are these tulip hooks from Ice Yarns. I need to get a couple more sizes for myself, but these are six millimeter hooks. They're both called Tulip, made in Japan. And the gray one is five bucks and the pink one is eight bucks. They're the exact same hook, exact same shape, exact same material. 
just different colors at different prices and the pink one just has some a little bit more packaging so oh here's another one I got a 6.5 I haven't even opened yet but that's gonna be really good for blankets and big scarves and then this is my absolute favorite it's most expensive hook that I bought for myself is my furls crochet hook this is a seven millimeter from furls and it's resin multicolored it was poured into a molding base and they come out so gorgeous there is only one thing I don't like about furls you see how the hook here the boy hook has like a flat spot to where I'm resting my thumb I can easily keep my thumb there and do the work but on this one this is round all the way there's no little flat indention part for your thumb to go so as I'm working sometimes my finger will just slip off to the side just a little bit and sometimes I'll, I'll accidentally like turn the hook and then when I'm pulling up a stitch or trying to grab onto a wraparound stitch or whatever the um, the yarn will kind of slip off of my hook and then I have to recatch it and that's kind of annoying but once you get the hang of using these furls hooks and you have a permanent spot where you put your thumb which the best spot to put your thumb is directly is directly in line with the hook I don't know if you can tell okay there's the side you want your thumb directly below the where the hook is facing and that way if you keep your thumb in line with the hook as you work generally you will not lose any of your stitches that you're picking up and trying to work with and pull through so don't move your thumb around on these keep your thumb in the same spot all the way through and letting the rest of your hand relax this is how I crochet with a knife hold and um, it works out much better that way so you just gotta it takes some getting used to on these furls hooks but they are so smooth and buttery with your yarn and I just I love working with them and it's so fun to have um, a shimmery multicolored item in your hand something you can also enjoy looking at while you're working your stitches I love this hook and I recently started um, a, a scarf for my grandmother with that red chenille yarn that I showed you in my last video uh, let's see next question I had some other questions here. How old is Raven? Raven. Raven was born in 2006. So this year she's 15. Um, I received her in October <clears throat> when she was she was just under eight weeks old. I know that. I just don't remember her exact age, and I don't remember the exact day she was born. I had just come back from finishing high school. I came back, um, I got my diploma on Valentine's Day, which is pretty cool. Um, I had a job waiting for me at Home Depot, um, and I was celebrating my 21st birthday. When I was 19, I moved in with, with, with a, what seemed to be a nice guy at the time, and I was doing carpentry and maintenance work with him. And then after 10 months when things were not working out, I moved out of his house. And I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go back and finish high school, get my diploma, and make something of my life. And make it to where I can be independent and not rely on a man. You don't need a man in your life to define you or to make you complete. But it is really, really nice to have that companion and have that love in your life. So, anyways, um, Raven, hey baby girl, come here. Come here, honey. Raven is 15. I believe her birthday is somewhere in August. I just don't know the exact date. Because as I said, she was she was like six to eight weeks when I picked her up, and that was in October. And so I consider her my little Halloween kitty. Because she's mostly all black. She has a white patch at her just under her neck. Another white patch on her chest. And then she has a small white patch on her lower belly. Whenever she's sprawled out, rolling around on the floor, she's on her back. My friend Wendy made a comment um, she, when she was over one day that she Raven looks like she's wearing a bikini. <laughs> He's so cute. Okay, off you go. Um, so, 
Raven's 15 and I've had her since she was a baby pretty much. So she's 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 my baby girl. She's my daughter. Another question. Okay, and this is a question I wrote down for myself. So when I do these getting to know me episodes, I'm mostly focusing on the questions that questions that you guys ask me. And then I will include a question of my own. And so this one is, do I like outdoor activities? And if so, what is your favorite activity? Yes, I absolutely love outdoor activities. I don't get outside, however, that often because I live alone. And for the most part, I do my own thing. Um, my sisters are doing their schoolwork now, hanging out with their friends. Um, my grandparents don't get out, you know, because of COVID and all that crap. Um, but I love outdoor activities. I love swimming and my ultimate favorite outdoor activity is putting a large picnic blanket out and just hanging out with family and friends. We're going to like, um, we could be going to a theme park somewhat like half theme park and half like a relaxation park to where like a place like where you go to watch fireworks where we're just lounging around listening to the music watching people walk around we're getting snow cones you know looking at the nice vendors and their toys and stuff getting you know funnel cake or whatever and i just i just like to lay on a blanket and just and just hang out um, and then swimming, of course, um, I like to, when I was a kid growing up, I used to love riding dirt bikes and climbing trees and climbing fences. I bet my mom five bucks one year. I think I was like 14, 15. I bet her five bucks. She could not climb that tree higher than me. Well, guess what? I ended up owing my mom five bucks. <laughs> so I was kind of surprised my mom climbed that tree higher than I did. I was just afraid of the tip, the tippy top, like swaying too much. And with my large size at the time, you know, maybe it would like snap, then I would fall to the ground and break a, break a, break a bone. To this day, I have never, ever broken a bone ever. I've never had any sprain. Well, I've had a lower back sprain, but that was due to work. All that bike riding I did and all that climbing never broke anything amazing um i was i'm still a huge tomboy big time and i'm just one of those types of girls to where i don't mind getting dirt underneath my nails i don't cry if i break a nail my nails are so thin and brittle anyways they're they're gonna i can't i can't grow my thumb any longer than that without without it chipping like it'll chip on the side then my whole nail will come off or it'll chip in the middle and then half the nail will come off um, there's my pinky nail. I can't grow my pinky nail any longer than this before it breaks, um, or chips at the tip, or somehow at work, if it gets caught on something, if I'm moving around too fast, which I always do sometimes, it'll just, the tip of the nail will just come right off. Eh, no big deal. It'll grow back in a, in a couple more weeks. No big deal. So, I'm, I just try not to cry over spilled milk, and I try not to freak out about little stuff like that, because this is a dirty world we live in. Like, think about it. <clears throat> we did not always have these nice, fancy, prestigious places to go to. We did not always have the capability to wear these nice, sparkling dresses and go to the opera, right? This world is a dirty place. All these nice buildings and, and everything, they were built on dirt. They were built by men who were always dirty and sweaty and everything. And it's just a dirty world. And I don't have a, not, a lot of nice clothes because I don't have anywhere nice to go to, really. Um, <clears throat> I prefer to just, you know, wear something casual and comfortable and laid back. And then, of course, every rare, rare occasion, I will have something nice to wear and I'll go somewhere nice. But this is a dirty world. And I like getting dirty. We are pretty much made from the earth's dirt. And when we die and pass on, we're going to go right back in the ground anyway, in one way or another. Whether we're buried or our ashes are spread somewhere or just whatever. We're going to become one with the earth again anyway. So why freak out about dirt? Dirt, And plus, that's what soap and water's for. I don't know where his work loves when I take the trash out at work. How's it soap and water's for? And I know that soap dries out your skin, but then that's what lotion's for. Another excuse to apply lotion and soften my cuticles and make my fingertips look better. And I love using Gold Bond lotion for that. Gold Bond is awesome. And I keep a little small thing of that in my purse. So that's all of the getting to know me questions I have right now. 
I'm going to make a cup of coffee and I'm awake now. I'm not going back to sleep. I only had like five hours of sleep last night. And then 8.30, my friend Andy was knocking on the door and he came over and we talked for a little bit and he made me feel so good. And then we went for a bike ride. Yeah, oh my gosh, it's so good. I feel bad though that we don't wear helmets. I really do. But I always say a silent little prayer that we have a safe ride to and from and back, of course. And um, I get a little worried about that. But I try to keep the faith that we're going to be safe. And all of the times that Andy has taken me on the bike, we've never had any accidents. That doesn't go without saying that anything could happen and somebody else on the road could make a mistake. But um, you have to be very, very vigilant. It's my opinion that... When you or anyone, it doesn't matter, when you are behind the wheel of a motorized vehicle, you have to pretend that everyone around you, everyone else around you is a complete dumbass. Like they got their driver's license out of a Cracker Jack box. You have to be so vigilant and you have to keep an eye on your six. Don't move your car without looking first. That's what my grandmother always told me. You don't move your car an inch until you look all the way around you. And then everyone else is a complete dumbass. So that's only when you're driving behind the car. That's not to be mean or anything like that. That can go for anybody driving um, behind the wheel. You have to just think that everyone else is a dumbass, even though some of those people are loved ones and, and, and you love them wholeheartedly. And they're not dumbasses, but, you know, it's just a generalized thought for safety you know you got to look out for number one so you can take care of your business and run your life right and the most important thing is getting from a to b so you can take care of things so that's all i have for now i really appreciate you guys um being here and hanging out with me thank you so much for subscribing if you're new welcome back and thank you for sticking with me if you've been here before Please leave a comment below if you have any questions. They don't have to be yarn related. Not too personal. Please don't ask me the color of my underwear or anything like that. Um, but if, 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 they're, if they're somewhat personal, you know, and I find it appropriate, I will answer it. Um, but don't go too deep, you know, right? Um, you can ask me pretty much anything you want and I will answer. And this is so much fun. Like, I want to do another one of these. And... Um, that's all I have for now, guys. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you guys another day. Love y'all. Hope you're all having a great crochet day.